Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial number 19 of the Lost in the Sea series. Today we are going to create an artificial intelligence for a non-playable character, which in this case is the octopus. And for those who have been following, I have exported the island in FPX directly to our Unity project. I only created a folder called Levels and inside it I created another one called Lost in the Sea. And just make sure to check selected object, so we can only export the island. And let's import to our scene in Unity and make sure to put the octopus in one side of the island like this. Now let's add a box collider, adjust the collider so it covers the octopus. And finally we add a ridgy body so the octopus can walk in the island. For the island we also have to add a mesh collider, which in terms of performance it's a bit expensive if we have too many, but for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna use it. And let's import an FPS controller, by going to assets, select import package and select character. And for now we don't need the roller ball and the third person character, we also don't need the physics materials and we can press import. Now let's import to our scene the FPS controller and put it in the opposite direction of the octopus. Your animated character will need an attack animation, something like this, and an alert animation. Now in Unity don't forget to go to the clips from your character prefab and press the plus sign to add the new animations, make sure that they start at zero and make sure you check loop time and press apply. In the last tutorial we already had an animator controller for the octopus, but let's create another one called octopus AI controller. And let's create four states with the right click mouse and rename this one to idle and select the octopus idle animation. This one is going to be called walking cycle and we can select the octopus walking cycle and another one for the alert state and last one for the attacking state. Now select respective animations and every state now needs to be connected to have a transition. This means the idle is going to be connected to the attack, to the walking cycle and to the alert. And the other states also need to be connected to each one. Basically you end up with something like this. Now make sure to uncheck the as exit time in every transition so the octopus can switch animations without waiting for the other one to end. And let's make in settings transitions a bit bigger so it isn't so abrupt. Now select your character and in an animator select the controller we have created which is the octopus AI controller. And now since these animations are not controlled, we are going to use booleans to manipulate this animation's flow. So let's go to the parameters and add 4 booleans. And we can call them something like is idle, is walking, is attacking and is alert. We are going to test this in just a few moments, but first we only need to add conditions to the transitions and we can find them here. So basically we use the booleans we created and say that it only goes from idle to attacking if is attacking is true and it goes back to idle if idle is true. Now it goes from attacking to alert if is alert is true and it goes back from alert to attacking if is attacking is true. Now it goes from alert to walking if is walking is true and from walking to alert if is alert is true. And so on. I think you have got the idea here. Do this for every transition. And after you have done it, I'm just gonna remove this script we created in the last tutorial, which I left the link in the description. And let's create a C sharp script called AI basic script and add it to the octopus. So first thing we want to do is create a public transform called player and that's going to receive our FPS controller and then create a private animator called anim. 
that as soon as the script starts, it's going to cache the animator component of the object that holds the script. So, in the update we are firstly going to handle the alert mode, then the attacking mode and the idle state. We are going to use a very simple if statement to handle this and we start by saying that if vector distance, the distance between player position and the octopus position if it's less than the alert distance, which we are going to instantiate in a moment. And now with the anim variable that holds the animator component of the animated character, we want to access the booleans we have created with set bool and say is alert is true and is idle is false. Now in the attacking we want to say pretty much the same thing, but this time if the distance between the player and the octopus is less than the attacking distance, we want the boolean is attacking to be true and the is alert to be false as well as the is idle. And if we are not in the range of alert nor attacking, we see if the is idle boolean is false and if so, let's set it to true and the rest of the booleans to false. Now let's instantiate some more public variables, one float called alert distance and one for the walking distance, which we are going to use in a couple of seconds and the attacking distance float. And we can already create a variable for the speed movement of the octopus. That's going to be very useful in just a few moments also. And before pressing play, don't forget to add the FPS controller as the player. And we want to say that the alert distance is something like 20 and the attacking distance is 3 or 4. Now go ahead and press play. And we see that if we get close to our enemy, he is in alert state. And now if we get even closer, the attacking animation won't work and that's probably because we forgot to limit the alert state. So we need to say that the octopus is in alert state if the distance between the player and him are less than the alert distance and it's bigger than the attack distance. And that's a range that we want for the octopus to be in a alert mode. And now let's see how it is works, let's get closer. And as soon as we are in the attacking distance, he plays the attack animation and if we go back, it almost goes back to alert state and there is just a small problem that we are going to fix it in a moment. But first it would be cool if the octopus would follow us when he is in the attacking range. So let's go back to the script and let's change this attacking distance to the walking distance. And we don't want to attack, so let's set it to false. We can copy this line and replace the boolean with is walking and set it to true. Okay, now we need the octopus to know in which direction we are so he can move towards us and start attacking. So let's create a private vector tree and call it direction. And when he is in walking distance, we say that the direction is equal to the player position minus the position of our octopus. And let's set the Y to 0, since we only want the enemy to track our position in a two-dimensional space. Now let's make the octopus rotate to the player direction by saying that rotation is equal to quaternion.slurp, which is a spherical interpolation between the rotation of the octopus and the rotation of the FPS controller. And quaternion.lookrotation basically gives us a quaternion from the octopus and our player and we could only use quaternion.look rotation but the octopus would rotate smoothly towards us as you can see in this example and that's why we use slurp to smoothly rotate towards us faster or slower depending on this value multiplied by time dot delta time so now we need the octopus to move and for that we say that the octopus translates in the z axis which is where he is pointing forward with a value of speed that we will define later. 
now this was for moving so let's create the part for attacking and we say that if direction dot magnitude less or equal to attacking distance we set the boolean of attacking to true and uh, is walking to false now also add this is walking false line to the idle state and to the alert state as well as is attacking to false and now that's it, just set the speed to something like 0.025, which I think is a bit slow, and the attacking to 4, and walking to 10, and let's press play to see if this works. So we get closer and the alert animation starts to play. And if we get even closer, he is walking slowly, but he starts to attack, which is great. So now we just need to set the speed a bit higher, so he can chase us. And as you can see now he starts to chase us when we get closer. And that's amazing, that's great. And the rotation is done smoothly with the slurp, that is also working well, which is a good thing. And I would just speed up the walking cycle now, but that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial we see an artificial intelligence a bit more advanced where the enemy will be randomly moving in a navigation mesh and avoiding obstacles. I hope you subscribe for more tutorials on game development and see you in the next tutorials.